Though another Detroit legend, maybe the Detroit legend in the hockey world, Gordie Howe. I met him once. <laughs> he was a total gentleman. Uh, I was a kid. I was maybe nine or ten years old, and I went up to him, and I didn't know what to say. He was at a like a sports uh, card signing thing, and I went up to him and I said, uh, "You know, my dad told me you were the best ever." It's, I just that's I didn't know what else to say. I was nervous, yeah. and he just goes, "Nah, nah, your dad's just a nice guy," and just you know <laughs> couldn't have been more cool. My understanding was he was around the team some yeah. when you were there. I mean, did you have any interactions with him? What he, was Gordy Howe uh, well, the guy like? I'll tell you, this is it. <laughs> My second day on the job, I'm sitting in, uh, I'm sitting at my desk. So there was a medical room. So if, if this is the medical room and then back here is Dr. Finley's room, there's a door right here. And then my office is right here. So I'm just sitting at my office and I'm talking to the controller, Paul McDonald, and I hear some keys clicking in Dr. Finley's door. And I was like, Paul, it was, it was like, july or made him in late june early july i'm like who's coming he's like i go who has keys and he is uh, mark brennan the equipment manager obviously at the time uh and then he goes and then there's a, f- a few legends have keys i'm like what do you mean he's like ted Lindsay, and go- and as soon as he says Gordy, i turn around and gory howe's walking through the door and he's like sit sit down sit down so he's and, he's and then he's like you're so you're the new guy he i'm like I, I'm speechless. I think I hung up on Paul. I, I, I still don't know. I've got to find out if I hung up on him, but I couldn't get out. Of, I was trying to get out of my seat and I like stumbled and Gordy Howe's like, have a seat. Have a, you want a coffee? The guy, he went and got, brought me coffee. My second day on the job, Gordy Howe was bringing me coffee and we sat and talked for like two hours. So he used to come in, he would come in, you know, uh, Mitch Album wrote that uh, Tuesdays with Maurice. I, I st- I really, I want to write, I, I do like to write. So I, I, I want to write a book because there's, I took notes at some point. So I want to do mornings with Gordy because he, in the, the moment, the first current Red Wing showed up, he'd like, see you later. I'm out of here. This is the room. He never wanted to infringe on their space, but he would come in, he would ride the bike. He would take a sauna. You could tell he just wanted to, you know, be in the atmosphere. Uh, be around the game, and he'd leave. He wouldn't and hang he would out. Leave. He would not hang out once the once the first player started to show up. So yeah, that became uh, kind of a regular thing. And then uh, as the season wore on, he would go back up to his home in in Traverse City. So this was, you know, this was a regular thing for probably you know first eight years of my career. I had mornings with Gordy. That I great. want that book. Write that book. Yeah, John. I want that book awesome. even before like the crazy stroke. Like. <laughs> I want I want just the Gordy Howe conversations. Yeah. Like I'd yeah, be so fast. Awesome. So you got to know him real well. I mean, I did. Yeah, yeah was, that's awesome. I was very very fortunate. I mean, I'm sure yeah. you don't remember the entire two hour conversation, but do you like general kind of like what the hell? Do you, what do you talk about with Gordy Howe? I would yeah. have questions for him. He, he he more that two hours was kind of offering me advice at the time. I was 26 years old. I had you know I was the youngest pro head trainer in sports and he could tell I, I was green and I was nervous. And he, he was, you know, he was trying to offer advice and he, he, he told me something in that two hours that proved to be true. He said, within the first half of a year, you're going to see all the injuries you're going to see, you know, all the different types of thing that are going to happen are going to happen quickly. But once you get good at them and once you get really proficient at, helping these guys, you know, he was in an era. They didn't, you know, they didn't have it. I had Lefty Wilson, legendary trainer. God bless his soul. Uh, he's, he, you know, he was, he was the legendary Lefty Wilson. So he was, you know, we, he, we love Lefty, but, you know, we know he didn't know anything. We, we had to really work with each other. You know, when I say he didn't know anything, he didn't have a medical degree. You know, he didn't, they didn't study for, I don't want to, I don't want to disparage on Lefty, Lefty Wilson's legacy, but uh, he was, you know, they knew even back in the, the 40s and 50s that there were a certain number of injuries that you were going to have. And they, they knew as players back then how to manage those injuries. So he spent for, you know, probably an hour of that time, you know, convincing me that, you know, you're going to see everything you're going to see probably in the first six months. And with the exception of Draper's injury and Vladimir Konstantinov's accident, he was right. I just, I can't imagine, like, 
Is that not one of the coolest stories you've ever heard? Your second day on the job. Yeah, like, second day. And that's, you continue to see him, though, right? I mean, you yeah. you saw him all the time. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that's yeah, crazy. He always came in. That, that has to be like. It was terror. always in the morning, too. He'd come down after games sometimes, but he would just stay around. He would talk to Scotty a lot, but he would never come, you know, in the room with the players. He, I, he, he stayed separate from that. And that was on, that was on purpose. You could, purpose. He, he told yeah. you that or he, you sensed that? I sensed that he, you know, he just didn't want to be in their space. That was their time. And, you know, he, he didn't want to be in their big dick in anybody for like, yeah, I'm already he, have, yeah. he knew the footprint that he, that he has and he didn't want to put it anywhere in someone else's territory. Thank you for watching Spiro Avenue. Don't forget to hit like. It's like, so you're, it's, it's like you're reading a script. I am reading a script. No, you're not. Do I have a script out? You gave me a script. Oh, my God. Okay. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> do I do it the friendly one again?